Hello everyone, today I want to talk about the most efficient ways to level all of your drops to max level. As someone that has leveled all of them, I have some regrets in the way that I approached things. And I think a lot of people, even those who already have a few characters leveled, will benefit from this video. So in summary, what I would do differently is instead of going for the most efficient leveling method, I would go for a variety of leveling methods that also provide other rewards. The reason for that is simple. Many of these things you're going to want to do in late game anyways, because this is the core content of Final Fantasy XIV. And second of all, by doing different things, you keep it from becoming boring and stale and burning yourself out. You know what they say, variety is the spice of life, and this is definitely true here. Alright, let's make sure we have our bases covered. The most important thing that I completely underestimated are bonuses. The first thing we have is rested XP. You get this whenever you're in a sanctuary. You can see if you're in a sanctuary by looking at your XP bar, there's a little half moon symbol whenever you're getting rested XP. Just always make sure to log out in the sanctuary and don't worry about anything else. This will provide you additional XP and let you level up faster. Next up is the food bonus. Especially when you're doing the story right now, you're gonna get food thrown at you. But alternatively, you can buy any cheap vendor food. The stats are completely irrelevant for us. All we care about is the 3% XP boost. Just use this whenever you're doing any kind of content where you're defeating enemies. Next up is the free company XP bonus. This isn't guaranteed, but I think most free companies are gonna be running this. Basically, this has to be used by the FC leader. Just join any FC and ask them if they're running the XP bonus. This bonus is pretty massive, so make sure you find an FC if you want to level your alt jobs quickly. Something else to consider is whether there are any preferred worlds. If you're just getting started, you might want to join a preferred world instead of a normal world, because the XP bonuses you get there are absolutely huge. Basically, everything is going to be leveling up twice as fast, and the minimum time you're going to benefit from this is 90 days. As long as you're on a preferred world, and the world is still designated as preferred, you're going to get the bonus. Of course, for a lot of people, it might already be too late, or they already have some friends who are playing the game on a different world, but if you have the chance to, I would highly recommend playing on a preferred world as a beginner. Unlike me, I had to do it all the hard way. Aww. The last thing you want to look out for is the challenge log. You get this unlocked very early and this will encourage you to do different kinds of content. For example, completing a certain number of dungeons will give you a bunch of bonus XP, which is really nice. I don't think anything in here is really worth targeting specifically because the XP you get is just decent, but it's good to keep in mind and check at the end of the week to make sure that you're not like one dungeon short of like a huge XP payout. But overall, this just plays into our strategy of a variety of content instead of hyper-focusing on some grindy content. Content. All right, we're now going to go through the leveling methods that I recommend. Not all of these are completely unconditional and always worth it, but I'll try to make it obvious when they are useful. Let's get started with the hunting log. This will have you hunt down specifically marked mobs around the world, and whenever you complete a rank by defeating the enemies listed in the hunting log's rank, you get a massive chunk of XP. So this is what I would recommend you target. Always target entire ranks, and never just do like a few mobs here and there and call it a day. For an easy way to find the mobs, I have a list down in the video description. In my opinion, hunting log is fairly slow, fairly high effort, because you have to find the mobs that you want to kill, and also fairly boring. I would only recommend to use this up to level 20 to get your characters into the zones where you can do other stuff. Next up are Fates. These are basically events that spawn all around the world. This can be used for decent XP all the way to max level. It's not very time efficient, but it's decent for variety. You want to check the level range of the Fate on the map, make sure you're somewhere close to it, and then just participate in whatever the Fate asks of you. Usually this involves killing some monsters, collecting some stuff, killing more monsters. You know how it goes. I like this early on, especially up to level 20 in combination with the hunting log, mostly because it helps me not do as much of the hunting log. Right here is a hotspot list that you can check, which will help you find appropriate zones for the level range that you're in. Whenever you get to Shadowbringers and Endwalker, you'll have access to so-called Shared Fates. These have a special menu. Basically, in the Shadowbringers and Endwalker zones, you have a Shared Fate rank, and you can increase this rank by doing Fates in these zones. By doing Shared Fates, you get a currency called Bicolor Gemstones, these are used to buy a variety of things such as minions, but also crafting materials that go for decent gil on the market board. Very often FCs will do shared fate farming events. So either join your FC if they do this kind of content or look out in those zones if you see a party and see if you can team up with people. 
Doing fates with others is always a good idea because it makes it easy to get gold participation and if you fly from fate to fate you're going to get through them much quicker. There are also XP bonus fates, especially if you're doing MSQ in a certain zone, have a look out for these. You can see them on the map marked with this symbol right here. These will provide additional XP and they might be an opportunity for you to just hop in on an art job, do the fate and then continue with what you were doing before. The next way to get XP is something that again you'll probably want to do anyways. The XP is just decent but it sucks if you have everything at level 90 and then you discover you have these left. What I'm talking about is class quests, job quests, and more specifically in my case, role quests. Class quests you wanna do up until level 30, whenever your class turns into a job, and then they're just called job quests from level 30 to level 80. In addition to that, there are role quests from level 70 to level 90. And these I actually held off on because I wasn't sure what the reward was, but now in hindsight, it's just free XP that you can get on whatever job you want. Again, I have a link in the description for you guys so you can find the role quest that you're looking for. I'm not saying these are amazing XP, they're okay, but again, you're gonna wanna do these anyways. Next up are the Beast Tribe quests. This is Final Fantasy's version of daily quests, and these all give decent XP, but most importantly, whenever you finish a Beast Tribe or you get close to finishing them, you get a mount reward. So not only do you get to level a job of your choice, but you also get a mount reward at the end, which is pretty motivating. I wish I'd started these earlier because I personally just finished doing Beast Tribe dailies. Meanwhile, I've been max level for a while, so I must have missed out on millions of XP. So do these while you're still leveling up. Again, there'll be a link in the video description if you wanna find the appropriate daily Beast Tribe quests. Next up are weekly and daily hunt marks. Basically, inside every expansion, once per week, you'll get a weekly mark and every day you'll get daily marks. This is basically like bounty hunting. You get a little thing in your inventory that tells you the location of whatever you're looking for. And then you can fly around the zone until a message appears which tells you that the mob that you're looking for is nearby. Alternatively, you can find the mobs online as well. Just Google the name and you can find the possible spawn locations. Go there, slay the hunt mark, and you get a decent chunk of XP that's nothing to scoff at. In addition to that, you'll get allied seals, centurio seals, and sacks of nuts, which can be used for various rewards. For example, you can get etherite tickets, which you can use to eliminate all teleportation costs. In my opinion, this is something that a lot of people are sleeping on, an easy way to get XP and additional rewards in the process. Next up are command missions. This is a feature of the so-called Adventurer Squadrons, which is part of your Grand Company. If you go through the whole Grand Company questline stuff, you'll eventually unlock these. The requirement here being level 47. Your Adventurer Squadron are various NPCs that basically are led by you. You sent them on missions, but there's also the option of doing command missions where you take three of them into a dungeon. Now this is some of the best grindable XP between level 20 and level 60. Whenever you have all of this unlocked, just go to an appropriate level dungeon, select who you wanna take into the command mission, and then just complete the dungeon with a bunch of NPCs. This will give you really good XP for some reason. And again, this is something that you're going to want to do anyways. I think you need at least 10 of them to achieve the highest rank in your grand company. Next up is deep dungeons. Now, if you've been consuming some Final Fantasy 40 content, chances are you've already heard about deep dungeons. Right now, there are three of these in the game, Palace of the Dead, Heaven on High, and Eureka Orthos. Explaining these in detail in the span of this video would take too long, but long story short, you start on the lowest floor and then fight your way up. You queue with other players or go in alone if you're feeling brave and tackle up to 200 floors for Palace of the Dead and 100 floors for Eureka Orthos as well as Heaven on High, defeating them in sets of 10. Your level progress inside the deep dungeon is separate from your level progress outside of the deep dungeon. So for example, you can be level 50 inside Palace of the Dead, but outside you're still level 20. This is great because it allows you a preview of whatever job you just took into the deep dungeon to see how the abilities feel at a higher level. The XP overall is not amazing, but it's pretty good. And again, there are plenty of reasons to do this content at this point, even without just targeting the XP. First of all, you're gonna wanna level up your ether pool arms. This will happen more or less naturally as you play, and it basically just makes you stronger inside that specific deep dungeon. So if you're gonna have to grind this at max level anyways to get your ether pool arms up, you might as well make use of the XP now. If you're overwhelmed by this right now, just check some other guides. I promise it's actually not as intimidating as it looks. Next up is the Bosja field operation. There is another field operation in this game called Eureka, but this actually can't be used to level. However, Bosja is really great from level 70 to level 80. Basically, this is a unique zone with a little bit of a storyline attached to it, 
that you go into and there will be special fates that spawn. These give decent XP and they spawn at a rate that allows you to basically always be fighting. In addition to that, sometimes special events will spawn. These can be like little trials that you have to participate in, which will be a nice boost to your XP as well. Again, all of this is content that you're gonna wanna participate in anyways eventually, be it for getting a relic weapon, for farming gil, but also for unlocking Delubrum Regine and Delubrum Regine Savage, which is kind of the Bosja endgame. Next up, and this one is super important, is Wondrous Tales. This requires you be level 60 and it has to be unlocked through a bunch of quests. Again, I will put a link in the video description for you to find all of this. Essentially, Chloe Aliapo here will give you a book with certain duties that you can do for her. And as you complete the duties, you will get little stamps on the right side. Your goal here is to ideally get three lines, which is very rare. But either way, you're going to be rewarded with special resources at the end of the week that you can choose from. And also half a level worth of XP on any job that you turn the book in with. So ideally you want to get this at the start of every week and then just continue doing all kinds of content that you naturally do throughout the week without specifically targeting anything. And then at the end of the week, it's very easy to fill the last few stamps that you need by using the second chances. Basically, there will always be two trials that should be relatively easy to do if you have a max level job. You can go into your duty finder, select unrestricted party and then just solo these. This only takes like 10 seconds in duty because of how fast the bosses die. And then you'll be able to use the second chance to do the same duty again. So this is an easy way to get all nine stamps and basically no time at all. This is something that I'm still doing despite not needing the XP anymore because the rewards you can get for three lines are just great. So just take your chances once a week and also get half a level worth of XP, which is massive if you're in a higher level. The next one is for all the PVP enjoyers. There's Frontline, Crystalline Conflict, and also Rival Wings. All of these will give you okay XP and also mount rewards as well as PvP series rewards. I don't think the XP is amazing, but it's great to mix this into your regular gameplay to do some PvP if that's what you enjoy. Lastly, we have Duty Roulettes. And I saved these for last because I feel like most people know about these. I still want to talk about them for a moment and talk about which ones are good and which ones I tend to avoid. So first of all, we have Leveling Roulette. This is one that I still do every day for the rewards. Even though I don't really need the XP anymore, it gives decent gil if you're playing as adventurer in need and it gives you a decent amount of tombstones as well. Next up is the Alliance Raid Roulette. I used to do this pretty much every day, but I got a bit fed up with doing the Crystal Tower Raids pretty much every day, so I've stopped doing them. However, these are amazing XP. The other duty Roulette that I highly recommend is actually Trial Roulette. This gets really good XP for the amount of time that you spend on it. Plus, by doing Trial Roulettes, you actually get to see some of the more interesting fights, which is a nice change of pace from a boring leveling roulette. All the other roulettes also provide decent XP for the time that you spend in them. However, I usually skip them because they're either too time intensive or they just don't provide enough variety for me to be interested in doing them every day. Next up, I have two honorable mentions that I think are not very efficient that you can do if that's the kind of content that you enjoy. The first one being side quests. These are all the side quests you can find out in the open world that aren't main story quests or blue quests. These are generally not XP efficient, okay? These take a long time to do and the XP you get from them is usually pretty pathetic. However, I think that there's a certain type of player who really likes the lore of the game, who just enjoys seeing characters talk and just reading quests and for those people the side quests are still an option just remember that they're a relatively slow one and the other thing is guild tests these i would only recommend doing if you're new to the game because they teach you some game fundamentals otherwise they're not really xp efficient not even with the duty roulette bonus and in my opinion when you've done them once they're extremely dull if this video was helpful, please leave a like down below so other people can find this too. And also, if you enjoyed this video, you might be interested in this one where I teach you how to level crafters with the same methodology that we applied to this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Lolly ho!